Johnson's taller and he's bigger too. Eubank officially weighing in at 13 stone four and a half, half a stone heavier than ever before in his life. Reach advantage for Thompson. Not that big though. Eubank in his 51st fight tonight. Look at that, 373 rounds for Eubank. Too many miles on the clock? Maybe. Thompson can hit 5.1 rounds per fight average. And the bookmakers say this. Thompson 2 to 1 on the natural cruiserweight. Eubank 6 to 4 against. Draw 33 to 1. Ladies and gentlemen, this evening of World Championship Boxing continues courtesy of Mr. Frank Warren for Sports Network and sponsored by Adidas and the McCarthy Corporation. Sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control, Supervisor John Morris. Steward in charge of this bout, Judge Alan Simpson. Timekeeper at the bell, Barry Pinder. And the World Boxing Organization WBO Supervisor at ringside, Richard DeCure. The three judges scoring this bout on a 10-point must system will be Luis Pavon of Puerto Rico, Dave Paris of England, and John Stewart from the United States. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action from England, Mr. Roy Francis. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Manchester, England, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO Cruiserweight Championship of the World! Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing gold with red letter, weighing 13 stones, 4 and 1 half pounds, in professional record, 45 victory. 23 by knockout with three defeat and two draw. And he has captured two world titles. Ladies and gentlemen, from Brighton, England, here is the challenger for a two-time world champion, simply the best, Chris And across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing green with gold, and weighing in at 13 stone, 7 pounds. His professional record stands at 22 victories, including 16 by knockout, with 4 losses tonight. He makes the first advance of his title. Ladies and gentlemen, for the Phoenix Boxing Camp in Manchester, England, presenting the WBO And a plum appointment as referee for this for Roy Francis. If all of you go to the canvas, I'll send you all under your two corner and you don't come out until the top. Now you look at me when I'm talking. Yeah, you look at me. Okay? You don't stay right, stand back to exactly what I mean. Shake hands. Have a good one. Well, does Thompson really prove himself here? Eubank says he's technically spot on for this. He was excellent really in defeat last time against Joe Calzaghi, but of course that was at super middleweight. This is a division 22 pounds higher. What strategy will Eubank use? He's been keeping it a secret. Most feel his tactics will be to not get involved. And look at these body punches from Eubank. And what effect, we wonder, will the heavy hitting cruiserweight Thompson have when he lands? Can Eubank has always been very, very strong, never been stopped. Will he be able to take a cruiserweight's punches? So many subplots here, Glenn. Yes, there really is. Even he looks as if he wants to have a fight early on. You would expect speed to be the key for him to be in and out, use the angles, and just try and outwork Thompson. Real speed from Eubank. That's one thing he does have here. And, and of course, a wealth of top-level experience. Thompson has been saying in the build-up he'll be in Eubank's face all night. Pressure him, make his natural extra weight tell.
Eubank has started sharply here. Eubank is working to a carefully defined plan that has been honed over lonely, long weeks on Bodmin Moor with his trainer, Massimo Perez, who first taught him to box in his days in the Bronx in New York. And sharp with the jab too. And it does look as if Eubank's tactics are to get in, throw fast flurries of punches, get away again. Yes, that should be the, the tactics he adopts. Use the ring, use the angle, just get in quickly, get the speed and then get out. Not be looking to mix it and make it a physical fight with the, with the much stronger Thompson. Eubank just on the run for a moment. Was he just shaken by one of those shots, you wonder? He's come back, he's regrouped. Flawed in the first round, remember, last time by Kalzaghi with a big left hook. Lovely right uppercut from Eubank. Beautiful shot. Look, he's shown some nice quick punches inside. He's very calculated about every move that he's making. four defeats he has been on the floor eight times in his career Carl Thompson Eubank's been down six times in all those long years Thompson working quite nicely behind his own jab but I think Eubank's round agree Glenn I would agree Eubank he just did more of the eye-catching work he's a little bit busier some nice little shots inside and he's loving it now he's playing to the crowd i think he was quite pleased with his round yes he didn't go back to the corner he went to a neutral corner and did a spot of posing and there were significantly even in thompson's hometown chance of eubank eubank in that round yes he's, he's always going to have a great deal of support this way is where he's on the run he just gets caught with a, an overcut there just a glancing blow but he's, he's on the run trying to uh, get out of the way there. They're just a, a short glancing blow, but I think it, it took a little out of him and he wanted to quickly make a hasty retreat. Thompson has 16 knockout wins in those 22 victories. A lot of his best performances, Thompson, have been away from home. Thompson in the green trunks, but you barely need the identification, do you, by now? Not when Chris Eubanks in the ring. combination from Chris Eubank at the moment looks needle sharp and is caught by a right hand and that's the danger for him he did seem moved by that Glenn yes he does it does look a difference in power every time he gets hit with a shot like that he's looking to quickly get out of the way and 12 rounds is a long time to make this strategy of his work and that's where Thompson can gain the advantage Eubank looking to hold inside and that's where it's physical a couple of low blows there from Eubank. Roy Francis saying, keep your punches up to him. Francis was the referee on that tragic night of the Chris Eubank-Michael Watson fight. In fact, it was Roy Francis' first job as referee in a world title fight. Just a few tricks going in from Eubank, just trying to unsettle Thompson. Eubank, but Thompson looking heavy-handed. And you just wonder if one of these is really going to get Eubank going. He's always had a rock-solid chin. This is a big, big jump. Two divisions in one leap. Eubank doing an awful lot to the body. Of Thompson quick flurries there. I would have thought he would have headhunted in a fight like this. Great right uppercut from Thompson. He's looking for some more 
heavy artillery. The battle lines, I think, are drawn here now. Eubank looking to use his speed to outbox Thompson. But that strategy involves him not getting hit too much, doesn't it? Yes, he's not moving as much as I would think, but a nice combination there. Oh, he just rocked Thompson. Thompson's hurt. Thompson is hurt. Eubank's got him going. He has the power, even at cruiserweight. And back comes Thompson with a right hand. His legs still look a bit stiff himself. This is boiling up into the fight we thought it might be. What about this? A good punch from Eubank. We didn't think he'd have the, the power to hurt Thompson, but he certainly did there. And now he's indulging in psychological warfare. Eubank's never been noted as a great finisher, but <laughs> what about this? Well, now he's got the confidence. He knows he can hurt Thompson. And Thompson was looking very shaky. He still does a bit to me. I think he was taken by surprise that he was he was hurt there. A combination of punches, the right hand being the one that did the damage. And the legs went. Thompson dropped the hand, which was a big mistake. And then experience and Eubank was very quick on him. Eubank is looking extremely sharp and accurate and technically honed here as he said he was. Well, it was very good the way he put his punches together. There was a cluster of punches, and one got through that hurt Thompson. And I think really that's what he's got to try and do. Keep the punches going in clusters. Thompson got through the round. Here comes round three. Due to go 12, of course. The WBO Cruiserweight Championship. Eubank's 51st fight of a long, long career. He made three defences at middleweight and 14 at super middleweight. The Thompson's been hurt in fights before in the European title fight with a clean tapper. He got off the floor to stop to stop tapper. A terrific right uppercut from Thompson there. The other thing you worry about really with Eubank is whether all the miles on the clock all the hard nights may catch up with him. He started very, very well. Just a little hint of a bruise underneath Eubank's left eye. Nothing much, really simultaneous jabs from them. Well, I think the good thing in Eubank, his favour at this point, is he's managed to come dictate the pace in the fight, so he can put the pressure on what he wants. This is a good round for Thompson so far, his best yet. He's starting to settle down, you feel. Work behind his jab, and he's finding Eubank with that. Eubank with those low-held clubs, and maybe the reflexes aren't quite what they were. I can think of a time when he would have just moved his head a fraction of an inch to get out of what the way of some of these. No, he's having to take these jabs now. This is much better from Thompson behind the jab. And another uppercut and a right cross from Thompson. This is the first dodgy period for Eubank. He's having to show that resilience. He'll be looking for counters in there. Eubank may have postured and gone through the pseudo-regal gestures down the years, but make no mistake, this man can fight. He's shown it in the trenches on a few occasions. Well, I think the character and the toughness of Eubank has never been questioned. And now he, may, he may need it in this fight. Now there are a chance of Thompson from some of the Manchester contingent. This is spellbinding so far. Eubank had a bad first minute and a half in the round. He's got through that and come back pretty well himself here. 
now he's starting to outbox Thompson, but I think it was still Thompson's round. He's right, showing his experience there, just posturing around for the first two minutes and then just towards the end, starting to throw eye-catching punches just to try and take the judges' eyes. There's that right uppercut. Just there was some good punches in this round for Thompson. He won the round for me, it was steady, but he got his jab working and that just kept Eubank off balance. And here comes another power shot from Thompson in this exchange. He, he rode it a bit, didn't he? He rode it a bit, he was coming in to get to the body, that's going to be a problem for Eubank. He is trying to throw a lot of body punches and when he, he's got to get close to do that, and that's when he can be open. Working in that Andres corner, by the way, is Massimo Perret. Somewhere in there is Dennis Andres, former world light heavyweight champion, who's been doing some sparring with Eubank in the build-up to this. Eubank at cruiserweight now. I think we, everybody sensed it would be. There's a lot of people came here to see this fight. Thompson, the quiet family man who lives near the Bolton Wanderers football ground, works in Billy Graham's Phoenix camp here in inner city Manchester. Says he's never had any favours. He's right about that too. He's worked hard, did it the, the hard way for everything he's got. And good fights in Europe. Good cluster of shots from Thompson. Oh, and a terrific right hand from Eubank, who set the sweat spray. And there, there was some kidology from Thompson, pretended to be hurt, and suckered Eubank in. And looked at right hand, and now he's got him with the right uppercut. Right uppercut from Eubank, who needs to get to a neutral corner. Thompson is down, and he may be in trouble. It's a mandatory eight. What a beautiful shot. Eubank found him there. What an amazing fight this is. Great work from Chris Eubank. This is an extraordinary fighter. And Eubank is finding all this, knowing that if he does not win, it is the end of the glory years. Thompson might still be dangerous. Both boxes there landing with good right hands there. They're both trying to load up, looking for the other to make a mistake. And the interesting thing is we thought Thompson would be the big puncher in this fight. Eubank has looked the puncher. It's amazing that he stepped up two weights and carried power. His power even looks better at this weight. There is a bit of a question mark about Thompson's own punch resistance. He has been down a few times, got up to win usually. To be absolutely fair to him. Thompson's come through the crisis, but at the moment, a big factor in this fight, it seems to me, is Eubank's extra resilience. Another bit of kidology from Thompson, but he is taking shots from Eubank. Eubank, big round, and there's a mutual tap of the gloves from the two fighters who are appreciating each other's qualities. And they're earning each other's respect in there. This is a, a great fight. This Thompson showing kidology there. He got caught with a good right hand, just pretended it was worse than it was, and came back with a, a big right hand of his own. Here's the knockdown with the, the uppercut in Thompson. It's looking as if he threw himself a little off balance at that point. He's going to throw a right hand, and he just, the uppercut was a good one, but he just, as he threw his own, I think he just moved away. But still, it was a, a knockdown and a, a decent one. Timing of that shot was something else, wasn't it? Freddie King. 
tending to damage by the left eye of Eubank. What a fight this is. Here's round five. And those who said that this was mission impossible for Chris Eubank are having to do a hasty redraft. They could yet be proved right now. We'll see. Jab and Thompson, who works better when he gets the jab working. Oh, a big right hand from Thompson again. It bounces off. New back. There's a bit of a nick under the right eye now of Newbank as well. His left eye's closing up a little, you know. That left eye's closing up significantly for Newbank. That could become a big problem later on. It's becoming something of a slip. Yes, it is. It flows very fast. That Thompson's got to carry on with the jab. That's a good punch for him. That left eye could be a big problem for Eubank. He may not see some of the right hands coming as this develops. Thompson will be encouraged by that. Gulp of air from Eubank. Thompson's confidence for the moment appears to have been restored. There seems to be a bit of strength which is just drained from Eubank in this round. Just doesn't seem to have that speed and sharpness he had early on. Oh, and Thompson looking to let go with a few howitzers now. Eubank not using the ring as good as he was. And he looks as if he's on heavy legs. Yes, if the weight thing is going to tell, it would be as it went on, wouldn't it, more? Oh, big right hand, and again, Thompson's legs do a dance, and that time he wasn't kidding. That time he was hurt again. Eubank knows that he may have the power to stop or knock out this fellow. This is dodging this way and that at the moment. It's nearly dodging out of the ring. Eubank coming back at the end of the round to hurt Thompson again, and he does have the power to upset the champion. A real thinking performance, this fight, Eubank. Well, Thompson was dominating the, the first two minutes of that round. Eubank came back and hurt him in the last minute. Even round? I, I would just have lent towards Thompson. He did too much work at the beginning of the round for me to, to clinch it, but it was a good, a very good spell at the end of the round from Eubank, who had Thompson hurt and reeling about at the bell. Well, so much good action for you tonight. It really is a bag of goodies. And remember, when all this is over, we still have this fellow to come. Prince Nassim Hamed in a great fight against Alfredo Vasquez until recently the WBA featherweight champion. He says round two. We shall see. Stay with us, as I'm sure you will, with the way this one's going. Eubank in those yellow trunks. Do you think Thompson will be psychologically disadvantaged, shall we say, by the fact that his best punches are not really moving Eubank yet. Most definitely, and also the fact that he knows Eubank has the power to hurt him, and that, that could have a bad effect on his thinking. He's got to continue to be positive, and he's got to try and press forward more. Most scorecards, I'm sure, will have Eubank ahead. Glenn McCrory's does.
this argument is a long way from being settled. It's funny, isn't it? For so long, Eubank looked so lazy in some of his defences in his earlier era. And against Calzaghe in a game tonight, he's pulled out two of the most memorable performances of his career. Yes, well, I think that was really when he was in his heyday and he was getting all the attention, maybe too much attention. And now when it's much harder, good right hand from Compton there. That was a cracking right, but significantly again, Eubank just took it. In fact, comes Eubank with a three-punch combination. Mohamed has a, a hard act to follow after this because this is a tremendous performance by Chris Eubank. Overhand rights from Eubank. Thompson having to take some on the way in. shakes his head as he's caught by a right hand by Thompson. Thompson will keep on throwing them, keep on trying to apply the pressure, and he may well believe that he will get to Eubank late on here. That left eye is closing all the time. It's, looking, Eubank. it's looking very bad, the left eye. That, that's going to be a major problem. And there's a long way to go. He was hurt by one of them, Eubank. But look at his response. Fighting hard. Tracking right hand from Eubank that time. It must be very tiring for you, but he's having to work very hard to keep Thompson off and keep putting in the quick shot. Hard round to call that one. Waiting for the winner of this is Sheffield's Johnny Nelson, who's sitting here at ringside with us. Johnny, this is some fight, isn't it? I think Chris is doing what a lot of uh, boxing pundits predict him in boxing to the best of his ability. His ability well exceeds uh, Carl's ability. And uh, what Chris has got to do is not stand there in front of him, just keep boxing him, keep jabbing him, frustrating Carl, making Carl work, uh, and making Carl like, extend his energy. And Chris will have a, a greater chance towards the end, but he's got to preserve his energy throughout the fight. Thank you, Johnny. Now, this is a problem, this left eye. They're really going to have to earn their money in that corner. They are. Look at the, the punches. Very close to the headshot. We you make a lot more body punches. Okay. Thompson looking relatively unmarked as we move into the second half of the fight. Looking off balance, and was that a sign of tiredness, the way he stumbled into the ropes on the far side? Well, I think tiredness has to be a factor, but also he was really trying to load up with the right hand, give it everything he could. He was squinting through that eye there. Oh, big right hand from Thompson, that hurt you, Bank. And is he seeing some of these right hands now through that closed left eye? this damage this must look like a long tunnel ahead for Eubank at the moment he's looking the superior technician and he's shown he has the power at the weight as well but there's a relentlessness now about Thompson Eubank still very, very dangerous. They're tiring the two of them, and you'd expect that too. Eubank looking very tired. They're falling into the ropes. Unsteady on his legs a little. Is Thompson taking over? It's been a, a very tough fight for both. But you just see the sense that you know, the stronger man is, looks the better the, the longer it's going on. Don't recall Eubank ever having an injury this serious in a fight. Oh, 
A right hand and Thompson's all over the place. He's all over the place. Roy Francis just on a new back stands off. Why did he do that? Why did he stand off? And it's unbelievable. He looked at first that he was that he was out, and then he says to Roy Francis. So I don't know if he was kidding or what was happening, but it's hard to tell in this fight. Did he believe that Thompson was trying kidology? If he did, I, I think he was wrong. I, I, I think, think Eubank, I think Thompson was hurt. I think that's what he thought. I, I think he thought. I'm not sure how hurt Thompson was because he was quick to reply to Roy Francis. Well, will Eubank live to regret those few seconds? They're both looking very tired now. Great right hand. Who has most left? Desire will become a big, big factor now. The way it looks at the moment, you'd be surprised if this went the full 12, wouldn't you? You would be. It is a tremendous fight. And I think we've got to give credit to, to both these, these boxers, but Eubank is doing so well. And I think that is the question. Was he was he rocked here he stood up he's a big right hand then the left hook he misses there then he falls into the ring he's almost turning away from you back there certainly at that point he looked badly hurt falls into the rope but then then the referee comes in Roy francis comes to look at him he quickly he, he just says something there i'm not sure whether he, he was saying this i'm just kidding but i think at first he was hurt well, who knows? Only Thompson can tell us. But look, I look, look at that. I tell you what, he's an Oscar winner. If he can, if he can, he, look at the eyes. Look at his eyes. Yes, uh, he does. He's then looking at the ref. But then he, I, I think he must have been heard at the beginning. Unravel that one. Eighth round. Seems like they've been out there for hours, doesn't it? Battling. Draining, grueling fight this. Eubank fighting with one eye, almost. But still doing enough on my scorecard. I just give him one point ahead. Now a timeout from Roy Francis. Not quite sure what he said to Eubank there. Oh, Eubank comes in with a right hand. What do you think Roy Francis was saying there? Well, I think at times Eubank has held in closely, shouted in instructions, and he, he's ignored it, and I think he was maybe just telling him to, to listen to what he's saying. You almost sense that one of them is ready to go, but which one? Well, it, it's appeared like that for the last few rounds. They both look desperately tired. Big punches are going in from each of them, and you just feel that either one could go. It certainly changed from that first session where Eubank was looking to use his speed and dance. Oh, big right uppercut, now the right hand. Eubank digs deep and comes back with two great rights. What a fight this is. Who will prevail? Are you watching Eubank's final stand? Well, there's a lot of pride in that ring. Neither one wants to give way. They both look hurt, then they come fighting back. Oh, gets through his right hand left, and Eubank showing all that resilience and rock solid chin. And look at him come back with a three punch combination. Unbelievable stuff, this. Big, heavy head shots. Roy Francis takes a close look at both of them. Oh, another right, and a right uppercut. Thompson, is he taking over? And every time you think he is, Eubank comes back with another flurry. But Thompson looks on top at the moment. Thompson looks strong. You wouldn't think Eubank can keep taking punches like these. These are heavy shots. He had to call it off for a 
just a split second. And now Thompson's legs look a little wobbly. Has he punched himself out for the moment? Answer no, because he has a right hand. These are boxing each other to a complete standstill. This is terrific stuff. They are bearing their souls, these two. This is memorable. There were times there when Carl Thompson looked on the very verge of victory, but every time that happened, Eubank came back with his own flurry, and there was one memorable left hook from him with his back to the ropes. At this point, he's just looking as if he's, he's ready to go. He's having a close look in the corner at the eye, it's swollen, almost completely shut. But he, at this point, just looks as if he's going to go at any second, and then he comes fighting back. Tremendous heart, tremendous pride. That eye has been closed for several rounds for you, but how much has Thompson got left? These brave gladiators. Is Eubank on the verge of being stopped for the very first time in his long career? What next here? Here's the ninth round. Thompson looks stronger at the moment, doesn't he? Big right hand there from Thompson. He does. He looks as if it's finally getting to Eubank. The, the extra weight, the extra strength. Eubank having to lay on the ropes more. His legs seem to have gone a little. Good up a good right hand coming out there, Eubank. You do feel that Eubank needs to get out of there, but I don't know, maybe he's happy just covering up and countering and hoping he can rock Thompson with one. Well, I think he's just maybe taking a rest right there, just got to try and get a bit of that back in his leg. Now he's back with movement. a lot of lesser men Thompson you feel would have prevailed worn his man down by now big shots again in there from Thompson Ruben content to stand in the corner not the best place you feel for him both of them digging so deep and showing enormous desire in pursuit of this prize of a version of the World Cruiserweight Championship. Not much coming back from Eubank at the moment. The Thompson also looking very tired. Oh, two big rights and Thompson has to give him there's a third one. He's all over the place, will Eubank go in this time? Thompson's head is clearing. Big right hand, Eubank's just been waiting there, just trying to get the energy for a big attack. Four or five times it seemed in this fight that Eubank has really had Thompson going and not been able to press home the advantage. Well, the crowd appreciating this work from Eubank, shouting out his name. Well, it's a sensational fight, this. This one will be talked about in years to come as one of the momentous battles in the British ring. Thompson putting the pressure on Eubank, keeping him in the corner for most of the round, and then Eubank comes out with flashy punches, big overhand right, that hurt Thompson, but again he just couldn't follow up with the punches he needed to get the job done. And how are the judges scoring it? One from Puerto Rico, one from the United States, Dave Paris from England.
most of the pressure in the round is coming from Thompson, but then suddenly Eubank comes out and he seems to hurt Thompson more than Thompson can actually hurt him. That's why I think he feels he's getting tired. Thompson's very strong, he has to keep his energy and just try and take him by surprise with a combination like this. And here's round 10. Oh, smashing rat rod jab from Thompson. Now that's just a trip up. He tripped over his legs, no knockdown. No knockdown. Thompson acknowledges as much. Right hand. Sending you back reeling for a moment, but he's still keeping it together. There's Glenn McCrory scorecard coming up for you now, in a moment or two anyway, there it is. Now it's just got the, the tide turning there for the first time, I'm putting Thompson ahead, just the one point. I think it must be close. Some of these rounds have been open to different interpretations and we've seen in the past how subjective the business of judging can be but will the judges be needed at times now they almost seem to be fighting in slow motion if the legs are very high very tired this has been a very hard fight the conditions of both fighters must have been excellent to keep this pace going, to take these touches. All that preparation on Bodmin Moore for Eubank is getting him through here. Eubank just falling forward, falling the arms of Thompson there, very tired. Thompson busier. That will carry some weight with the judges. The big crowd here have seen a fight to remember, but which way is it going? Left hook, now the jabs from Thompson. Good pressure from Thompson, but I think we're just expecting something at any time from you. By every round, he's brought something out. It's a superhuman effort, this, from both of them, but especially from you, back, who you feel has gone back to the tank about 50 times. And every time he comes back with just a wee bit more fuel. Thompson's round, Glenn? Yes, for me, he worked better, but the appreciation is from everybody. George Foreman on his feet at the end of that round, clapping the action. Thompson's landed 212, Eubank 238 from less throw. Better the precision from him. Quite a long way. Dangerous, Chris. You need two more rounds to win the fight, they're telling him. I think tonight that you having to experience a fight every bit as savage and draining and demanding as that memorable fight he had with Nigel Benn in 1990 at the NEC, which none of us who saw it will ever forget. Yes, he really is. It, 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 this is an, an epic battle for Eubank. I don't think anybody really thought he had this sort of fight left in him. He's been through so many great fights, and then to, to perform like this is remarkable. This might well depend on what happens in the last two rounds. Although we can't possibly be absolutely certain of that. Thompson has certainly been doing the better work and more of it in the second half of the fight. Eubank 
seemed to be the best for the most part in the first half, if generalisations are possible. Yes, I think at this point, Thompson looks the fresher. I think we expected that the extra weight, the jump up, had to take its toll, and it is in these late rounds. whether he was holding on for a moment, seems okay. He's shouting at Eubank to work off the jab in the corner. Good left hook in there from Thompson. Again, just trying to keep the pressure on Eubank. Draining body shot coming in from Eubank. These two, well, there'll be almost a fusion of spirits between them after experiencing this together between these ropes. Eubank's covering up while he's taking a few of those on the gloves. Eubank trying to use all of his experience from these laid rounds to make his work accurate not to waste energy Thompson still doing more I wonder if Eubank is thinking in the back of his mind that he's in a lead and is in a situation where he's holding on and staying out of trouble I, if he is doing that he may be making a mistake boxers are often the worst scorers of fight when they're involved in them well, it's, it's very hard to really know what's going on point-wise when you're in there. You know he's in a very tough fight. Look at that dancing Eubank just did there. Look how fresh his legs were to do that. I didn't think he still had that in there. Well, he was dancing, but then he lost balance towards the end, which shows you that he is tight. He's just trying to look fresh. Thompson still looking the better, putting more shots in. Thompson is winning these late rounds, you feel. There wasn't a whole lot from Eubank in that round, really. George Foreman, who's standing about two yards away from Glenn and I, is on his feet and clapping. He's appreciating this fight, and rightly so. Well, you couldn't fail to appreciate this. This is a marvellous fight. Thompson, so much pride, he wants to defend his title. It's his hometown in Manchester. He wants to have a good fight, but Eubank is making him fight every step of the way. But I guess you've got Thompson pulling away now, haven't you? I, I've given him nearly everything of the last few rounds. Oh, just, I've given him three rounds ahead. I've given Thompson the last four, but I had Eubank in a useful lead before that. So it still might be close, who knows? The 12th and last round, people are on their feet all around this arena. You see Helen Mirren, the actress in the background there. Two rows back. And Eubank looks for a big finish. Has he been holding a little back? What were the odds on the draw? 33 to 1. <laughs> well, this is going to be a hard one to say. A lot of these rounds have been pretty close, but I give it Thompson pulling away towards the end and that handy lead of three points he's just looked the pressure but Eubank's had some marvellous moments in this fight doubling up on the jab, right hand sharp work from Eubank still Eubank's talking to him now. They can both see the finishing tape. Eubank holding his arms and off, trying to send out signals to the judges, maybe. I think they're too experienced to buy that. I think it's also a, a little kidology to Thompson, maybe trying to just make him lose his cool, just lull him into a, a big punch. Well, 
we didn't think he could go to our front line. Notice you back there, nod to George Foreman. There's a smile and a... Oh, he's got a permanent wink with the, the left eye, so it may not have been a wink. <laughs> he's had that for about half an hour, too. Shouts of Eubank ringing around, some of Thompson, too. It's been one of the great fights seen in the British ring. Eubank again says something to Thompson. He had to take a, a left hoof for his effort. You like trying to suck a Thompson in. That's right, and look for a counter. You might expect that a big finish to this round from Eubank. 23 seconds left. If he's going to do that, he'll need to do it fast. Does Eubank feel he's ahead? They'll both claim the victory here, I'm sure. And he's carrying out a running conversation in there as the seconds tick away. Maybe Eubank just got that last round. Look how the fans here, nearly 20,000 of them, at the Nine Acts in Manchester, celebrate. You think Thompson's won? I think he's I won. think he's close. Probably by about three points. But I think Eubank has gained so much respect from that performance. They're carrying Eubank around the ring. But this really is all part of the psychological warfare. You can ignore this. They're carrying him around like he's a winner. Thompson now has his arms aloft. A great appreciation for a, a great fight. I don't think we'll sit through many more as grueling and as tough as that. Yes, it's been a privilege to witness such a fight. Eubank. That left eye was a handicap for him for such a long way in the contest. It was a, certainly a factor. And I remember saying with about five rounds to go, I did, this doesn't look as if it can go 12. It did. But a, a long way through the fight, it just went to and fro. You thought one was going to go, then the other one. It was that sort of fight. But Thompson, for me, just had the better work rate. Eubank come with a, in snatches. There was some great work where he had Thompson in big trouble but he just didn't have the workers throughout the round to get the the points but did Eubank win most of those early rounds how far ahead was he before Thompson took over that's going to be how those early rounds were scored could be quite a factor yes he was winning big I had a, a 10 eight round in the fourth yeah, yeah with the with the with the uh, with with Thompson being down so he was doing very well early on but as the fight went on it didn't appear that Eubank punches were hurting Thompson quite as much we're going to get the decision any moment now from Michael Buffer. Puerto Rican judge, American and an English judge. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, we go for the scorecards, but before we do, I'll put a round of applause for this great example of hand-to-hand -hand combat here in a boxing ring between champion and challenger. The score is as follows. Luis Pavon scores about 114 to 113. One sixteen to one thirteen from John Paris. One hundred fourteen to one thirteen from John Stewart for the winner by unanimous decision. And still Thompson has got it. After such a brave gladiatorial effort is beaten for the fourth consecutive world title fight and they will argue over that judging of that fight i'm sure i bet when we ask around people had all kinds of different interpretations of that but thompson give him all the credit in the world in a great great fight has prevailed and is it the end you wonder of eubank's career Will he want to go on after such a draining battle as that? It was a fight, really, that neither of them deserved to lose. They, they didn't. It was a, a great fight. But I think Thompson worked hard 
he's deserved this world title he had to prove himself tonight he gets his his moment of glory and i think in his career he deserves that look at the scorecards one round in it on two of the cards dave paris the english judge gave it to thompson by three rounds i felt it was very very close it was too close really to have a serious argument about either way but uh, your heart goes out to eubank really after that it was a brilliant performance from him but well done to to carl thompson because he was hurt and looked on the verge of going a few times in case you're in any doubt that was chris eubank's 23rd world title fight easily a british record may it stand for a long time but there's no gainsay carl thompson won this fight on every card and may now go on from strength to strength as a reigning world cruiserweight champion barry mcgregan just a quick word about you then first well that was the most courageous tenacious decent fight uh, that i've seen him put up for a long long time he uh, i thought lost it in the last quarter of it really but what a what a uh, what a showing of courage and determination his face was lumped up and bruised from the midway stages fantastic and uh, you've got to take your hat off to him and listen with a performance like that he could always ask for a rematch couldn't he indeed jim what you've covered you back fights gone way back to the glory days 1990 1991 what was what would you say about that Eubank tonight? Probably the most wonderful uh, performance I've seen from him. It's hard to believe this is a fellow who served up so many boring title defences in his early career. But as a challenger in his last couple of fights, he's been completely superb. That was a wonderful performance tonight. I think the right man got the verdict, but what a wonderful fight. Let's talk first to the man who got the verdict. Well done to Carl Thompson. He and his trainer, Billy Graham, are with Ian Dow. Well, congratulations, Carl. Still the champion, but what a great, great fight. You must feel privileged to be a part of that. I feel, I'm not taking anything away from Chris. But Chris performed brilliant. I have to go back and see what I'm doing wrong. But even though I won, that's not Carl Thompson in there. You weren't doing too much wrong. You, you won a memorable fight. I know, I know. I'm very critical. And very critical. And I think I took too much notice of my mistakes what I'm doing wrong and then Chris is catching me and uh, I can't kind of thought that's what I learned a valuable lesson today but I tell you I kept on trying no way I was going to let it go I kept on trying to the very end and I'm going to have to give my hands to Chris for a brilliant fight did you expect it was going to be quite as demanding and grueling and memorable as that I expect it was going to be a tough fight I didn't think I was going to perform that badly <laughs> Yeah, I mean, even though I win, I, I don't think you, I don't think you need really need to go into all this self-recrimination. Tell us what you think. Tell us what you think that victory has done for your career because you spent a lot of time in the shadows, haven't you? You see, that, that, I just show people that I got the grit and the determination. The determination got me through, and throughout my fight, the determination got me, got me where I am now, and got me through this fight. And I show the people that with great determination they can do it as well. They can do what they want to what they want to achieve. So I just thank goodness I'm the champion still. Be honest with me, he seemed to have you really going a few times, didn't he, in the early part of the fight? It's me I tend to trick. And Mr. Harry Francis told me don't do the trick. Nothing wrong with it. I shouldn't do the trick because the referee can stop it. I got me it hurt me uh, when he knocked me down. But the other occasion it hurt me, but not hurt me enough. I wanted him to come in, okay. and he, he was a bit wary of it. So it's all took it, you know. You got to really, really put me down before I go. I believe me. I don't know. It was tiring just to, to watch it. You need about five years off, don't you, to get over that now? No, no, no. I'll be straight. But I'll be straight back into the gym. I'll be straight back in there and doing and practicing and practicing and waiting for the next challenger. You know what I mean? And next challenger will be a lot, lot better. Well done tonight, Carl. You're in a fight that people will talk about for years. Can I say thank you to the Manchester fans? I, I, I really appreciate it, you know? Sometimes it feels so lonely, I tell you. And to you know that people out there are supporting me behind me, I tell you, it's brilliant. It's a brilliant feeling, and I thank you very much from the bottom of my heart that you come out and support me. I thank you very much. One last question. Do you want a rematch with him? I have a rematch with anyone, I'm not bothered. 
I'm not, I'm not scared of people who are fight. So if Chris wants to come again, I'll come again. And I want, I want pain this time, really, basically, because there's a lot of people out there want to see me lose, and I won't mention any names. You know what I mean? And, and I come, I come trumped again, and I prove them I can still do it. Well done tonight, Carl. Thanks a lot. We can only say well done to Carl Thompson, and let's hope he does go on now to earn the money out of this tough game that his dedication certainly merits. We hope but to get backstage and talk to Chris Eubank in just a moment or two. WBO World Cruiserweight Champion. And Jim, what about that performance from Thompson? Wonderful performance. I know Eubank's going to get all the credit because he was the underdog and we didn't expect him to perform like that. But you have to hand it to Thompson. He was very self-critical. I think when a fighter's in a real hard fight like that, they tend to be self-critical. They think they box badly because they're not used to being hit so often. But when Carl watches that on tape tomorrow, he's going to realise what a wonderful performance it was. I mean, it took a wonderful performance to beat Eubank tonight. Nicky. Uh, a great performance by both boxers. So courageous. I think that uh, Eubank will look at that and rue not going forward. Well, he could have won that fight by knockout. The second round, I think it was the fifth round, there were so many chances. He did the same against Steve Collins. I mean, throughout his whole career, he could have, he could have won two of the fights he actually lost. Barry, you said Eubank's best chances would be early in this fight. Yeah, and it turned out to be true, but it, what was remarkable was how vulnerable Thompson was. He was hurt so many times in the, you know, in the second round here. It looked, and I thought it would only be at you know, Eubank's speed in the early rounds, but Eubank continued to hurt him and continued to make him look like uh, is shaky at, at, at every given moment that he broke through. This is round four uh, again, and he's just breaking through with punches. And look at look at this. I mean, he said he, but he said he was, he was fooling here. He wasn't. Well, what about he that? was badly hurt. I mean, that's that that really is ridiculous. A ridiculous statement. He was he was stunned with that punch. And as I, I agree with Nicky, he you know he would be so disappointed when he watches. If he'd have made the effort in the early rounds, this fight wouldn't have gone into the second half. All he had to do was string three or four punches together. But you can't tell me that a man as experienced as Eubank would be fooled by Thompson appearing to be hurt and not but Chris has following been through. A good finisher. That has been a, a, a criticism all the way through his career. It hurts fighters with long, wide point. punches. He doesn't put punches together very well, Eubank. He forces his punches, so he's not a good finisher. But here again, he when he stood off, he stood off and stared at the man. Now, Carl Thompson's not acting there, He is gone no there. He is gone absolutely, there. totally gone. And, and all it took was three it. punches. Now, I know he's, and I've ridiculed him in the past for not throwing punches and coming forward and trying to learn how to improve his aggressive boxing. But he had this guy so many times. And all he had to do was walk in and go one, two, three, and the fight for the middle. Jim, just as a, a layman here, you know, you, I said you've covered Eubank fights, and if he's going into retirement here, what I will remember from Eubank's career is Eubank under this sort of pressure, so often through his career, yeah, but courage. you cannot put him away. The, the man has never lacked courage or sheer heart for the game. And listen to the reception he got as he left the ring tonight. I mean, the most popular man in the house. I mean, I know Naz has still to come, but if Naz finishes tonight's work as popular as Eubank, I'll be surprised. Because that was a wonderful performance of courage, stamina, ability, everything that is good in boxing was shown by both these guys tonight. Well, indeed, Eubank. maybe Carl Thompson has taken a, a giant step forward because he's lived with this. He has task. taken a giant step forward, but he's shown such frailty tonight oh. that I think that Johnny Nelson will be rubbing his hands together. Mm -hmm. I'll actually put my money back on, on a, a replay of this fight. This will be in three months' time. Mm -hmm. I think you can guarantee these two will be back in for twice as much money. Because uh, everybody wants to see that again. That was such yeah. a brilliant fight. And you know what it is? It's such a shame for, for Carl Thompson. He has never had the chance to earn a big money. And I'll tell you what, next time around, I would favour Eubank. Because he looks so shaky in the early rounds. He'd look at this fight and he'd say, okay, and next time I get a chance at him, I won't let it slip. <laughs>